I am Edmund G. Brown, the Attorney General of the State of California. The Constitution of this state designates me as the Chief Law Officer and Head of the State's Department of Justice. One of the most important bureaus in the Department of Justice is the Bureau of Narcotic Enforcement. As Attorney General, I know that drug traffic and drug addiction go hand in hand with crime in general. Not only are narcotic violations the leading felonies committed in most of our counties, but more than 30% of all other crimes committed, such as murder, robbery, burglary, and assault, are directly attributable to the drug traffic. The story you are about to see is true. It's an almost unbelievable true story. It took place in Orange County, California, comprising the city of Newport Beach with beautiful Balboa Bay, Laguna Beach, the artistic center of the West, the famous San Juan Capistrano Mission, and the city of Santa Ana, its county seat. Because of what happened somewhere in these United States is an attractive 30-year-old housewife with an underworld price tag on her head a death sentence passed by the men who control this country's narcotics traffic. Boys just don't do things like that. It's impossible. Dr. Freely of the coroner's office can testify that both boys were under the influence of narcotics at the time of the accident. Even the superficial evidence was conclusive proof. In the case of young Tommy Efron, the scars on his arm indicated a habit of long standing. But how do they get it? You don't just buy narcotics like, like a pack of cigarettes. Unfortunately, Mrs. Carter, narcotics aren't difficult to buy. But in a decent community like ours, how can a thing like this go on? There are a half million people in Orange County, Mrs. Efron. The Coast Highway runs right through here. The supply of narcotics keeps coming up from the south. After all your years of experience, Lieutenant, don't you think you should know who the peddlers are? The small pushers, yes, that we know. But the big men at the top, that we don't know. But isn't it your business to know? It's not that easy, Mrs. Carter. For one thing, we need more manpower. We don't have enough help, we don't have enough money. Oh, yes, we know, we know. Every time you're publicly embarrassed by something like this, you make excuses about lack of men and lack of money. I'm sorry, but those are the facts. Facts? The only fact that we accept is that it's a tragic one. Two young boys are dead. One of them was my nephew, my... My sister's boy. <laughs> and you do absolutely nothing about it. Mrs. Carter, I think our narcotics officers are doing all they can. But it isn't enough. It just isn't enough. Come on, Mother. You've got to do something about this. <laughs> Home, all right. I'm going to talk to Ralph about you coming to stay with us. 
I don't want to be a burden to anybody. Oh, Nora, you won't be. You just shouldn't be alone, not now. But, no, I, no I'm, I'm not through here yet. I'll phone you later on, all right? Lieutenant! Lieutenant Hagen, what do you intend doing about this? Just what we've always done, Mrs. Carter, everything we can. That isn't enough. You made yourself very clear on that point. Well, evidently not clear enough, Lieutenant. Look, Mrs. Carter, if you think you and a lot of other civic-minded people can do this job better than we can, fine, go ahead. If you want my job, take it. Now, if you excuse me, I have a lot of work to do. <laughs> Bottle of beer. How about a drink, Shorty? No. Cheapskate. Beat it. When you take it, drive it down for about three hours. Be sure no one's tailing you before you give it to your friend here. Tell him what to do after that. Sure. Tú lo tomas y te paseas por tres horas en tu coche antes de dejarlo en el puesto de gasolina. Yo lo recojo del puesto de gasolina. Estaré ahí para recoger una llanta reparada. Los narcóticos estarán en esa misma llanta que me darán ellos. And you take it right over the line. Right. Understand? Sí, cómo no. Salud. 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 Willie. What are you snooping around here for? Not doing nothing, Willie. You were listening, weren't you? I didn't hear nothing, Willie. You know I don't understand Spanish. Oh, I had just had to see her. You know, I feel I need a shot. I figured I could make a buy. What's the matter with you, stupid? Look, I got the bread already. Listen, hophead. I'm down here on a little vacation, seeing the bullfights and watching the races. That's all. Understand? Yeah. Now feed it. Look, I know you don't have the stuff yourself, but you can tell me where to go. Stay away from me. Let's get out of here. Deseo hacer una llamada cobrable a Santa Ana, California. Kimberly 36196. Sí, gracias. Yes? Lieutenant Hagen, please. Lieutenant? Yeah, me. Now listen, I got something big. Yeah, maybe, but Willie thinks I don't speak Spanish. Now listen, this is how he swings it. He comes into town, see? He makes himself noticed by everybody, spends a lot, you know, the big man bit. Yeah, well, that way everybody's watching him. Works like a decoy. Meanwhile, his pal... Matt! Matt! Funny, what is it? Suddenly stop talking. See if you can trace this call, will you? Right. Matt! Maybe you had to cut the call short. No, I don't think so. Operator! Ah, hmm? I see. Well, keep trying, will you? She says he didn't hang up. Well, that makes it easy to trace anyway. Lieutenant Hagen, Look, I lady, I told to you to wait to outside. What are you doing in here? I tried to keep her up, Lieutenant. I told him I had to see you. We're very busy. Some other time. Well, I am not leaving until you listen to me. Look, Mrs. Carter, we're on something important. And I'm here on something important, too, Lieutenant. All right, what is it? Alone. I'd like to talk to you alone. Okay, Sergeant. Eddie, see how Hal's doing. 
Right. All right, Mrs. Carter, what is it? Lieutenant Hagen, I want to help. I if there's some way to stop this narcotic traffic, I, I want to be a part of it. Nobody has to know that I'm working for you. You mean you want to volunteer as an undercover agent for us? Well, if that's what it amounts to, yes. I'm sorry, Mrs. Carter. I'm afraid you've been reading too many detective stories. They've traced the call. T1. The Mexican police are on it. Oh. Oh, Eddie, Mrs. Carter. Eddie Dine. Mrs. Carter's just volunteered her services as an undercover agent for our department. Mrs. Carter, I can understand your concern for your nephew. You're involved in this thing, and, and you're hurt, and you're angry. On an impulse, you want to help. Well, it's very kind of you, but I'm afraid we can't accept your offer. It's no job for a woman. We've never used a woman. And we don't intend to. Lieutenant. Hmm? What is it, Alfred? They found him. Nat's dead. Knifed. Whoever did it got away clean. Hal, get down to Tijuana right away. Work with the Mexican police. See what you can come up with. Right. Lieutenant, I wish you would reconsider. So you want to be an informant, huh? You know what that officer just told me? No. One of our informants has just been found stabbed to death. Okay, Eddie, you can show Mrs. Carter to the door. Thanks for coming in. If you should happen to change your mind, I'm in the Santa Ana telephone directory. Mrs. Ralph Carter. You been crying or something? Oh, Jimmy, I haven't been crying. Look, Jimmy, how would you like to have some nice glazed donuts? Yeah. And a big glass of ice cold milk. Uh-huh. Come on, we'll go in the kitchen. You run along to the kitchen, Jimmy. Hi, honey. Hello, Ralph. How's Nora? Oh, she's taking it pretty hard. Been pretty rough on her, huh? Ralph, I've asked Nora to come to live with us. And I don't mean just for a few weeks. I, I mean to stay. Okay, sweetheart. You think it'll help Nora to ask her here? Fine. Go ahead. Believe me, honey. After a few days, Nora ought to go back home to Toledo. Get far away from this. It's the only way she's going to forget it. You know, Ralph, maybe we all ought to go away. Where'd you get that idea? Well, Ralph, I, I would just assume that Jimmy grew up in another community. And you want me to give up the best job I've ever had? Oh, not on your sweet life. After I left the coroner's inquest this morning, I went in to see Lieutenant Hagen of the Sheriff's Office. Yeah, about what? About becoming an undercover agent for the narcotics division? You... You what? <laughs> What's so funny? Oh, nothing. <laughs> oh, stop it, Ralph. Stop laughing. Oh, brother. Well, what's wrong with the idea? Well, nothing, honey. But what do you want to do? Put the FBI and the Santa Ana police out of work? They need their jobs. I can do as good a job as anybody. Sure you can. I bet they just jumped at the idea. Well, no, as a matter of fact, they turned me down. But they may change their minds. Well, if they do, you take the job. And don't shirk your call to duty. You powder your pretty little nose, you give your girdle a good yank, and you go after them dirty rats. Both guns are blazing. If they change their minds, I'm going to hold you to that, Ralph Carter. 
Okay. So long, Mata Harry. <laughs> Lieutenant, our government has asked me to cooperate with you 100%. We always have. Now, about Willie Down. You have our report right there. All we know up to now is he checked in at the Torador Hotel, threw a party, went to the bullfights. After the bullfights, he came back up north. Nothing to pin on Willie there. You ask me, Willie Down had something to do with this killing. Oh, I think so, too. But uh, we haven't anything definite to go on. Yeah. Well, if you pick up any leads, give us a call. I'll be glad to. Bye, Captain. Thanks for coming out. So, so long. Adios, senor. We're getting nowhere fast. We've got to find another informant. Lieutenant, what about the Carter woman? No, what about her? Well, with that gun, we need help badly. From anybody. I can't ask a woman to do this kind of a job. It seems to me you don't have to ask her. She volunteered. I don't know. Somehow it just doesn't seem right. It's worth a try. He's right, boss. Okay, Eddie. Let me check on her. Right. And we'll talk about it. Get me the chief of police in Toledo, will you? No, 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 I'm just verifying something. Right. You have my full report there, Lieutenant. We also checked where she lived in Toledo. She used to be very active in civic work there. What does her husband do? Typesetter over in Garden Groves. He works nights. She's worth a try, Lieutenant, on account of her personal interest in the case. You think so too, huh? I do. What about her husband? Guess we'll have to talk him into it. Okay, Hal, I'll get her on the phone. Tell her we're coming over. Right. Forget this, both of you. If this thing goes through, you're going to be responsible for it. If anything happens to her, I'll break both your necks myself. We've never used a woman in this kind of work before, Mr. Carter. That's why we think your wife would be very effective. Uh, maybe some other woman, but... Well, not a girl like Phyllis. Oh, well, will you please sit down? Now, why not? I want to do it, and you said I could. Yeah, I know, but I was just kidding. The whole thing seems ridiculous. Well, I, I didn't think it'd go this far. And you ask me, it's as far as it does go. Maybe we could find another woman instead of Mrs. Carter. But you see, most of the people who volunteer for this kind of thing are... <laughs> 99 out of 100 are emotionally unstable. They do it for kicks. They turn out to be more trouble than they're worth. Mrs. Carter is the first decent person to come to us out of decent motives. Thank you, Lieutenant. Oh, Ralph, you can't honestly say that this work isn't important. Oh, of course not. And somebody has to do it? Is it because you think something might happen to me? Will it? She won't make a move without someone being within 50 yards of her all the time. Well, I don't know. You, you really want to do this, huh? Yes. I don't know how much I can help, but at least I might be able to do something. Well, one thing I'll say about Phyllis, Lieutenant. When she's got her mind set on something, don't try to talk her out of it. It's a waste of time. <laughs> okay, honey, we'll give it a try. Oh, Ralph. But on one condition. All right, what's that? When I tell Phyllis she has to quit, she quits. Fair enough. When do I start, Lieutenant? As soon as we find you an apartment. What for? We can't have her identified with this home and family. You're going to have to be an entirely different person, Mrs. Carter. Well, my only hope is, is that I look this good when it's all over and done with. 
18 months in the federal penitentiary in West Virginia. What did I do? You were implicated in a bank holdup. It's a pretty naughty girl, wasn't I? You were a gun mob. Oh, come on in, Jerry. Lieutenant. Hi, Jerry. Hello, boy. Hi, Jerry. Hi, Jerry. Mrs. Uh, Lynn Stewart, I'd like you to meet Jerry Jackson. He's going to be your police husband, Mr. Wilbur Stewart, while you're working with us. How are you? Nice to know you. Well, it looks fine to me, Lieutenant. Better not let Jerry's wife hear you say that. Uh, Mrs. Carter, these people use a uh, strange sort of uh, jargon. Well, this is a list of some of the expressions they use. You'd better familiarize yourself with them as soon as possible. Mm. Uh, for instance, H means horse, heroin. Nose candy is cocaine, sometimes called snow. Grasshopper? Well, grass means marijuana. Grasshopper is a marijuana user. Oh, well, that figures. Anchor is husband. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> Did you arrange uh, for Mrs. Carter's job? It's all set. Come along now. I'd like to show you where you're going to work. Oh, all right. Thanks, Jerry. Thank you. This is it. Well, does the owner know why I'm going to be working here? Oh, yes. He's cooperating 100%. This is where they congregate, hmm? Congregate? I mean, uh, hang out. Well, that's more like it. You really do need that list. Be quite a haul if we ever raided this place. Well, why haven't you then? Well, if we did, they'd scatter all over the country. This way we know where they are. Oh. When we really do want to pick them up, we arrest them someplace else. Mm. As far as they're concerned, we don't even know the place exists. Here's a fellow who could be of real help to us, Willie Down. Is he the top man? No. With your looks and a lot of luck, you might lead us to the top man. Okay. When do we start? Monday night, 6 to 2 a.m. Well, I won't let you down, Lieutenant. I didn't think you would. Stand on my head to read it? <laughs> Jim, I'm sorry. You're kind of nervous. You new here? Yeah. Yeah, I I'm new. Take it easy, chick. Your chassis will do great. Thanks. What do you have? Well, for now, just a pack of butts. What brand? Your brand. Is that all? That's all for now. Thanks, Dullface. Hey, I keep the change. Thank you. I'll see you, huh? Well, there's no sense taking you back to our apartment. Change your clothes, I'll take you home. Okay, I'll dump this and then I'll ship the scenery. Hmm? Woman, you is the swinging. Ooh, crazy man. <laughs> Yeah, there's the sound of 
send him a blank big tip on you last night. He's really TD and H. TD and H? Yeah, tall, dark, and handsome. Oh, TD and H, huh? Hi, TD and H. Dig me? I dig you. Nice to see you again. Here, look it over. I am looking it over. Oh. We got a marvelous meatloaf and spaghetti there. Number nine. Miss Stewart. Can I see you for a minute? I'll be back in a second. Look, you didn't report to your probation officer. Let me go. Where do you get off dropping a crack like that on me? Come back here. Will you lay off me, you big gorilla? Now, look, I just asked you a question. Yeah, I know creeps like you and your questions. Now, look, sister, you're out on parole, so you'd better watch that tongue of yours or else. I've got a decent job here, haven't I? Do you want me to lose it? Well, OK, but you better report the first thing in the morning. Yeah, I will. I made up your mind what you want. Hey, Charlie, that's pretty good acting. You ought to be in pictures. Yeah, I guess that convinced old Willie. Well, they're all alike. I don't dig cops. They get the same ideas as real people. Like me, for instance? You know what I mean. Sure. Cop said you're on parole. So? Sue me. What kind of a beef was it? Look, fella, don't put me down, too. It's water over the dam. I did a quick 18 months, and I'd like to forget it. Do you mind? I don't mind, but those cops ain't gonna let you forget it. What'd you say the rap was? I didn't say. Come on, you could tell me. OK. A cat I dug was picked up on a bank beat. They said I was driving the car. When I didn't peep, they laid it on me. Were you driving the car? Who are you, the DA? Great coffee. Glad you like it. Yeah, keep the change. Finn, well, you came on strong with the tip last night, but this is too kind. We're just selling hot groceries in there. They're not that good. Don't you want it? Well, sure I do, but... What time do you get off? Two o'clock. I'll pick you up. Not tonight. I'm married, and my anchor gets home at 3 a.m. Well, I'll drive you home, then. Well, there's nothing in it. But if you just like to drive me I'd home... I'd just like to drive you home. See you, doll face. Yeah. Well, this is it, huh? Yeah, this is it. Good night, doll face. Good night. Thanks for the lift. Car 571. Car 571 calling in. Go ahead. He went west on G Street. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Pete. All clear, Lieutenant. Willie's headed west on G Street. Good. You got any idea where she is? She's on her way up. Why, Ralph, what in the world are you doing here? Couldn't work. I was worried about you, I guess. Oh, darling, you mustn't worry. Hey, this get up. <laughs> it's only part of the job, Ralph. Well, I don't like it. How'd it go? Well, all right, I hope. Never met anybody quite like Willie before. I was kind of nervous. <laughs> nervous. I was terrified. Didn't have to worry. Had three cars tailing you at different points. It's certainly nice to know. Yeah, it sure is. Did he, uh, did he say anything? Any leads? No. No, but we made a date for tomorrow night. He did tell me, though, that he was a liquor salesman. Let's hope he tells you a lot more. Mm. Okay, Jerry, you can drive Miss Carter home. With pleasure. Hey, what's the matter with the two of you? I'm here. Oh. <laughs> you know, I, I think we could let Mr. Carter drive his wife home just this once. Well, okay, but uh, I don't like my wife going home with other men. Oh, Pooh, oh. come on, Ralph. <laughs> Good night, Lieutenant. Good night. 
Phyllis? Mm-hmm? Are there going to be a lot of dates with this Willie? What's the matter, Ralph? Don't you trust me? Well, I trust you. Just that I don't trust this Willie character. Oh, don't be silly. I can take care of myself. I hope. You hope. That's exactly what I mean. Oh, no, Ralph. Take it easy. Here's the elevator. George, have car 571 keep tailing Willie. And if he should turn back this way, let me know. Okay. and a policewoman. Want a candy bar? Yeah. How about you? No candy. Calories. I don't see any uniforms. They're in plain clothes. They're probably off duty. Here. Hey, take a look. That's Willie Down, isn't it? Well, what do you suppose they want? Who knows what any copper wants? Come on, Willie. Let's blow no, this No, 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 no. Keep bowing. Pins? You're lucky to stay out of jail. Willie's as slippery as they come. Yeah, the guy who nabs him will be up for promotion fast. I think you got something there, Joe. Let's give him a frisk. Good idea. We'll mix a little business with pleasure, huh? So if we can't be the smartest guys on the force, who knows? Maybe we can be the luckiest. Come on. Make it a strike this time, baby. Do my best. Hey. You. What do you want from me? I just want to say hello to an old friend. Give you a little frisk. Why don't you lay off me? I'm clean. You got no right to shake me down. Maybe we haven't. We'll do it just the same. Come on. Not so fast, honey bun. We're going to frisk you, too. Get your hands off of me. You got no right to frisk her without a warrant. If we find what we're looking for, we don't need a warrant. And you'll need a bail bondsman. Take her in there. Come on. Is that your purse, honey? Yeah, that's mine. Hey, mister, are they all through bowling? We're lucky they are. Anything? Find anything on her? Not a thing. Yeah, nothing, Willie. Listen, we would just mind our own business and have a little fun. What'd you expect to find? I'll give you three guesses, Willie. Can't blame a guy for trying. Sorry to disappoint you. Get rid of that stuff I gave you, baby. Sit down. It's your turn. Wow. You're pretty smart, doll face. Not as smart as you were slipping there to me. You're good enough to be on our team. So you throw a strike this time, huh? I believe the stuff has gotten cut too much. It's cut below the border before we get it, Turk. I know that, but my pushers are starting to beef. Let them. They beef too loud, don't sell them. will be back yelling in a week. I'll get it from somebody else in L.A. I'll let it bother you. These days, we'll get our own stuff and cut it ourselves. That's a nice dream. No dream, baby. Because it's going to happen one of these days. And when it does, I'm going to make you quit that lousy job at the drive-in. Willie, if you made me do that, I wouldn't have any excuse to see you anymore. I never thought of that. 
Don't think a little thing like a husband's gonna keep me away from you, do you? Turk? Yeah. Next telephone pole on the right. You mean you just leave it there like that, Willie? It's safe. Yeah, but I don't get it. Well, in this business, nobody trusts nobody. The big guy set the deal. Then my top guy collects the money in advance, tells the buyer to have one of his men pick the stuff up at a certain place, like that telephone pole. So I leave the stuff there. Somebody picks it up for the buyer. He don't know who I am. I don't know who he is. Yeah, but why is it so complicated? Suppose the guy who picks the stuff up gets caught. They ask him who peddles the stuff to him. He's got to say he don't know. He could never finger me like I could never finger him. Foolproof, hmm? Yeah. Unless you get double cross. That only happens once. Eh, Turk? Uh, yeah, Willie. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is the telephone pole. From this house across the street, you can photograph the whole thing. We're going to be leaving some more junk there tomorrow night. Got that, Hal? I'll see if I can rig it in the morning. Now, over here, we have an old house in an orange grove. You can't miss it. Anybody in it? No, no, it's empty. Willie puts the junk in a bin in the back. And if you wait long enough, somebody will come along and pick it up. It'll either be one of two men, Miff Durbin or Al Mackin. We've run into this Durbin before. He got off on a narcotics charge a couple of years ago. Uh, nobody bigger than Willie, huh? No, no, not yet. I think we're getting warm. What makes you think so? I don't know. I just have a feeling. Give me more time. Come on, hubby, let's go home. <sighs> yes, dear. <laughs> Good night. Good night, night fellas. Thank you. Good night. Here we go. Yeah. Gee, that's funny. All the lights are on. What time is it? Three o'clock. Maybe I better check, huh? No, no, I guess it's just Ralph waiting up for me. Would you like to come in and have a cup of coffee with my other husband? <laughs> no, thanks. I better not. If I have coffee, it'd better be with my other wife. Oh. Well, thanks a lot for driving me home. See you tomorrow. Bye. -bye. <laughs> What is it? Mommy, mommy! Jimmy! It's all right. It's only a bad dream. Aunt Nora's here, right here beside you. There. He had another last night, as bad as this. He just called for you all last night. Phyllis, you're gonna quit this job. It's out of my head to let you do it in the first place. Mommy! Tommy! You don't go out every night with dirty crumb bums like this. Stay out until all hours and expect things to be the same at home. For Jim or for me. All right, Ralph. I'll quit. I have to give them notice. But I'll quit after tomorrow night. Okay. I'll tell Lieutenant Hagen in the morning. Mommy. Darling, it's all right. Mommy's here. Well, we both knew it would be tough right from the start. I know. I appreciate you sticking with us this long. Well, I promised Ralph that this would be the last night. I'm only sorry I couldn't finish the job for you, Jim. Oh, no, you, you've been a great help to us, Phyllis. Thanks. Well, I guess I'd better be going. Um, where's Willie taking you this afternoon? Oh, he said something about going out to an old mission. Mission, huh? Mm -hmm. Don't suppose he's turned over a new leaf to you. <laughs> Who knows? We'll find out soon enough. Bye. Good luck. Here he 
comes. Right on the nose. Hello, Father Alfred. Well, did you have a nice visit with your sister, Father? Next week, it is very kind to visit me. Priest? <laughs> he doesn't even know he's got a present for me. Yeah. Make like you're taking pictures of the place. Okay. Hi. Set your watch by. Early this morning in Tijuana, one of our guys tapes this bindle under the collar. That old priest does more good than he'll ever know. Um, what are you going to do with the pictures? Present for being a good kid. Thanks. When they're developed, I'll get a projector somewhere and I'll show them to you. Don't bother about that, honey. No film in it. Nice camera, though. Got it, eh? Yeah. Willie is very photogenic. Hi, Doc. Hey, got you a couple of more 49 merch, Doc. You interested? Yeah, I'm interested in all the 49 merch you can get me. I don't know why. You never seem to sell them. Well, I like to help the high school kids out. What do you mean? A lot of kids work all summer to get enough money for that first car. Summer's over, they drop in here, they make a deal. Yeah, I know you kind of deal, Doc. I bet you let those kids rob you blind. <laughs> Remember your first car? I'd just like to help the kids out. Well, I'll have the merch here the first thing in the morning. Doc will be ready. Well, stop's here, Doc. Good. Something you and I should talk about, Willie. Sure, what's on your mind? Willie, the boys are telling me you're seeing a lot of a certain dame. Yeah? What about it? Now, you've got to be careful, you know, Willie. You can't afford to associate with bad company. Bad company? <laughs> are you kidding? Yeah, but I uh, heard she did a bit. She did, 18 months at a federal can back east. West Virginia. How long has she been out, Willie? Three, four months, why? You gotta be careful of parolees. Especially if she was mixed up with junk. She never was mixed up with junk. She was in on a bank heist. Don't worry, Doc. This chick is okay. What's her whole name, Willie? Lynn Stewart. Hello. Sir Diggin, please. Hi, hiya, Doc. <laughs> yeah, Federal Pen, West Virginia. That's right. Lynn Stewart? Brother, you're asking me if I knew Lynn Stewart there. Huh? That's like asking my left hand if it knows my right hand. Hey, how come you're asking? Is she out? Yeah, she's out here, Susie. Uh, she goes with a friend of mine now. Well, listen to me, Doc. You just tell this friend of yours he's the luckiest guy on two feet. They don't come any finer than that gal. Uh, well, I'll be meeting her soon. Yeah, she sounds great. All right. He's okay, huh? Okay. There's your battery. You better get moving. And don't forget to switch cars. The guests will give you the keys. I already told them. Right.
Sure you do. I, I'm Dr. Freely. Uh, no, you must be making a mistake. I've never seen you before in my life. Look, the lady don't know you. Sorry. Could have sworn I'd seen her before. Now I'm really sure who you are. Mrs. Carter. No, no, you're wrong. You were at the inquest. Those young boys were killed in that crash. Oh, terrible thing. Of course, the police are working very hard to clean up the whole mess. Please, mister, will you just go away? Please don't talk anymore. Will you get out of here? Go on now, beat it. I'm sorry. Could have sworn you were Mrs. Carter. Will you get out? Saying knew you, huh? Oh, he thought I was a broad named Parker. Oh? Listen, Willie, was that really a battery? Sure was. It's got the biggest charge in it any battery ever had. <laughs> Works much better than that old spare tire trick we used to pull. My idea, too. Look, there it goes. Pretty smart, aren't you, Willie? Yeah. Now, Fred made a special trip up to show us how the stuff's moving. All right, now take a look. Goes from here, along this route, to here. That's just outside Tijuana. It'll be coming in a grocery truck. How much junk is there, Fred? 24 cans in a case marked pepper. Oh, that's a lot of junk. Some oh. guys down there got it in from the Middle East. And all we got to do is take it away from them. Have you worked out Fred's end of the deal, Doc? Yeah, 10 percent. 10 percent? That's a lot of bread, Doc. Any objections? Ah, uh, we all know you deserve it, Federico. Now, Willie, <clears throat> Fred will start down in an hour. About an hour later, you start. Gus, you and Turk leave about an hour later. Uh, ben will follow around 2 o'clock. All right, get going. All right. Ah, uh, Willie, you're taking Len, so you work out the details. Right. Hey, when are you coming down, Doc? I'm not. My job's this side of the border. I'll keep you posted. Willie, we got it made, Doc. Doctor, is he very bad? He seemed perfectly all right yesterday. The first time he complained of anything was this morning. But I thought he was just trying to get out of going to school. So I sent him on anyway. But I thought you kind of liked working here. Well, I did. But it's just time to quit, that's all. Job too much for you? Oh, no, nothing like that. I met a guy. Real wonderful guy. And, well, he wants me to marry him. No, crazy. Oh, great. So he says I got to stop working. <laughs> well, he's a very lucky guy to be getting such a swell gal. Uh, we're going to miss you around here. Yeah, there's a lot of people that are going to miss me. Listen, you kids, if, if that guy comes in here that's been picking me up every night, will you tell him you don't know what happened to me? <laughs> Ginger! Wait. Coming! But he knows where you live. No, I moved out this morning. Linda! You don't feel too good. Go in and beg off the rest of the night. Well, where are we going? I'll tell you on the way. Well, look, if we're going to be out late, maybe I better phone my husband no and make phone an excuse. calls. From now on, we can't take any chances. Get dressed. Okay. 
think you'd better call the boy's mother. I'll do it, Ralph. I, I, is it very serious? Well, we'd better take him along to the hospital. We can't be sure of anything until we run some tests under the proper conditions. Hey, lady, your phone's ringing. Oh. Yeah? Could I speak with Phyllis Carter, please? It's urgent. Phyllis who? There's no one around here by that name. the excitement and the big rush. Do you mind letting me in on this? Remember that dream you were kidding me about? Yeah, I remember. Well, it's coming true. You mean, this is it? This is the big one. After this, we have nothing to worry about. We got it made. We'll be on easy street. Anything yet? Half the force out looking for us. How's your boy? He's got pneumonia. What? Pneumonia. Listen, I want my wife back here. Jimmy's in an oxygen tent. I want her back We're here. We're doing everything we can. Listen, if anything happens to her or the boy, it's your fault. You talked her into this. We'll find her. I'm sorry about the boy. Get Captain Gonzalez, Tijuana. Across the border? I'd better call my husband. Call him when you get back. Now look, we can't be seen going across together, so you go over first. Through the entrance to the right is a lawyer's office with a sign that says Mexican divorces. You wait there for me, huh? Well, how long are you gonna be? I'll be across in a couple of minutes. I told husband. you no phone calls, remember? Sorry. <laughs> okay, Freddy, let's go. Get in. <laughs> kind of worried, honey. No. No, it's just that this is so big that I'm kind of excited. Nothing happens to us coming back across the border. Nothing to worry about. This one's gonna be a breeze. Now, come on. Willie, before we go any further, I've been thinking. Yeah, about what, Freddy? About how I lined up everything. Seems to me I sold myself short when I agreed to 10% of the deal. I'm asking for 20. It's okay with me, Freddy, but you gotta handle that part with Doc. No. As long as Doc isn't here taking any part of this gamble, I'm telling you, 20%. Okay, Freddy boy, if that's the way you want it, I'll tell Doc I okayed it. Shake. How many guys will be in the truck, Fred? Only two. Good, two's easy. Now, you understand what you gotta do when you get to that place that Freddy told us about? Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, I've got it. Lady, I gotta get to the border. Yeah, but I can't stay here alone all night. I've been waiting for hours for someone to come along. He's very pretty, this Chiquita. Maybe we better help her, eh? Don't be a fool. Good looking broads are poison. We can't move anyway. All right. Look it over. But be careful. I'll keep you covered. You got gasolina? Yes, I, I, I've got gasoline, but there's something wrong with the motor. Hey, the trouble is in the engine. Maybe you better look. All right. All right, let's look at it and get it over with. Get the light in here closer, lady. All right, get your hands up. Turn around. Slow. Frisk him. Why, you rock. Shut up. Desgraciado. Shut up! Get in there. Get in there. Yeah, I did. Well, Willie, you, you said you were just going to tie him up? This way's safer. He's right. Now they can't finger us. Where are the groceries? Well, like I told you, they're in the truck in a box marked black. Well, pepper. get them! Hurry up, Freddy. Hey, you're not going to forget to tell Doc about my 20%, are you? Don't worry, Freddy. I'll take care of it myself. Put it in the wagon. Good boy, Freddy. All right, get in. Why did you have to do that? I said, get in. You, you killed three men in cold blood, and, and there was no reason for it. No, don't touch me. All of yourselves. You killed them like animals, worse than animals. You killed them like they were nothing and Stop all. It. Nothing, Stop nothing it. at all. Now get in. Get in. <laughs> Take it to the barn, dish it up. Ah, oh, boy, quite a hole, huh? Hey, what's the matter with her? Nothing, she's okay. What happened? She went to pieces, Nosey. Beat it. Dates. Always causing trouble. Come on. Relax. Listen, don't take it so big, will you? 
You gotta get rid of people like that sometime. They're not nice people anyway, none of them. Besides, this is a dog-eat-dog -dog kind of racket. You gotta get them before they get you. Not long ago, I had to take care of a stool pigeon right here in Tijuana. I had to get a medal for getting rid of scum like that. By the way, I forgot to tell you, your old friend Sue Deegan is in on this job. Sue Deegan? Yeah. Do you remember your old pal? My old pal? Yeah, sure. Sure I do. Listen, pull yourself together, will you? You're gonna meet her later on. You don't want her to see you looking like this, do you? I'll get the car. Okay, kid. Now I know why Doc likes these 49 works. These doors sure hold a lot of junk. You can get it all in one door. Well, that's just the point, honey. That's why we got five cars. This way we lose one, we still got four left. Okay, here it is. Turk, you go first. Go up through Tecate. Kid, an hour later, you follow him the same way, okay? Now, look, I'm going up through San Isidro. An hour and a half later, Gus, you follow me up. You better get started right now, Sue, honey. Okay. Now, you all know the different points you're supposed to stop at up north. From each one of them, keep reporting into Doc. He'll guide you in. Okay, stop moving. I'm gonna get the doors. <laughs> okay, start across. Hold it. Benny just drove up. Let him go through first. Where were you born, please? Chicago. You buy anything? No, just took in the fights. Okay. Okay, go ahead. And stop worrying, I'll be right behind you. Now look, the thing's over with, it's done, you can relax now. Nothing more is going to happen. How about a little smile, huh? Come on, you could do better than that. No, uh, give me a little air in the front tire, will you? Okay. Willie, would you mind if I freshened up a bit? Go ahead, it's a good idea. Maybe it'll make you feel better, huh? Yeah. Mister, you're out of paper towels in there. Thanks.
Ma'am. The dame says we're out of paper towels in there. Oh, I'll let old Duncan do it. He'll be in later. Everybody except Sushi ain't phoned in yet. Good. When Sue gets here, we'll have the whole load. How about a drink, Doc? Okay. Hey, what's eating her? Just sits there in a daze. No, I don't know. She sure surprised me cracking up like that. I'm not so sure it's safe to have a dame like that around. What do you want me to do, Doc? What do you think, Willie? Maybe a little music will cheer her up, huh? Yeah. Hello. Okay, honey. Yeah, the Corona Motel. Oh, that's right. It's in Garden Grove. The Sue. She'll be here in a little while. Maybe seeing Sue again will snap her out of it. Yeah. We interrupt our midnight to dawn record ramble for an important police bulletin. Police are still searching for Mrs. Ralph Carter of Santa Ana. Her son is critically ill in Orange County Hospital. If Mrs. Ralph Carter is listening in, would she please contact the hospital or the Santa Ana Sheriff's oh, Office? Got to get out of here. My back, you know. Hey, what's the matter with that stupid dame? No, please let me go, Willie. Please calm let me go. Down. Let what's me the alone. matter with you? Let me now take the gun and go home. Please down. let me go. Listen, just enough trouble for one night. Now stay there and keep your mouth shut. Willie. have to take care of it, huh? Well, we can't risk having her around. Take her for a walk or something. After Sue gets there. Any way you like. You should be here by now. All right, Sue's here. She made it. You guys take your cars back to the lot. Leave one at a time. Then go down and give Sue a hand. Yeah. As soon as here, maybe she'll feel better. Willie? Willie, Willie! Please, Willie, I can talk to Sue downstairs. Just let me go home. I'm scared. 
I'll take you home. I want to keep him down there. Ben. Really? Why don't you let me take the car and go home? And I'll, I'll call you tomorrow. Sue! What's going on down there? I know I'll feel better than... Take care of his girlfriend. Phyllis. Oh, my baby. How's my baby, Jimmy? He's gonna be okay. Did How are you? Why didn't you get here soon? Why didn't you? We searched the whole county looking for you. We wouldn't have known about this if the old guy hadn't found your note. Please, is my baby all right? Phyllis, he's fine. You're sure? Yes, he's fine. Okay? Let's go. Take you out here as though you're one of the mob. Okay. Ready? Delayed. I just want to hold them, both of them, and never let them go. Ralph keeps begging to come, but a lot of these inmates have friends on the outside. We can't run the risk of letting them see you and Ralph together, especially in here. Is Sue here? You don't think we put her in the same jail with you, do you? No, ma'am. We've got her down in San Diego. Ready for the grand jury tomorrow? Yes, I guess I'm ready. I wish I could go home tonight. I know. But it'll be a lot safer if Doc and his gang think you're one of them. They'll know you go before the grand jury, but they won't know what happened to Lynn Stewart after that. This may be the last chance I have to talk to you. It'll be safer for all of you if you live somewhere else. The DA's office has helped Ralph find a good job in Denver, better than the one he has now and the bank will take care of the sale of your house. After the grand jury tomorrow, there'll be a car to take you and your family to the airport. Thank you, Jim. Phyllis, you've been wonderful. Just wonderful. Uh, you know something? My wife's expecting, if it's a girl, we're gonna name her Phyllis. So long. Okay, Mosey, we're ready for Lynn Stewart. <clears throat> Listen, if you know what's good for you, keep your mouth shut. Understand? Or else. I understand. 
understand, Willie. I know what's good for me. Don't worry. Raise your right hand, please. Swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, self regard. I do. She should be out by now. You know what's sad about this? It's after what she's done, there can be no public recognition. For her own safety, she has to pull up stakes and start a new life. How to go? All right, I guess. Thank you, Phyllis. Thank you, Lieutenant. Me. Mommy! Mommy! Jimmy! Jimmy! Oh, no, no, no. Mm. Ralph. Come on, honey, let's go. They're waiting. That was the last I ever saw of Phyllis Carter. But wherever she is, whatever she's doing now, I hope she hears the sound of my voice. Thank you, Phyllis. It's a pretty nice world that has people like you in it. Yeah.